Hey guys, what's up? It's Erica. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, please make sure to subscribe. It really helps me out. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about doing the Disney World 10K during Disney World's marathon weekend and also my first experiences at Disney World because I live in California, so I grew up going to Disneyland. I've probably been over a half dozen times, so I feel like I'm not a crazy Disney adult or anything, but I've definitely spent a good amount of time at Disneyland. Yeah, I'm just gonna talk to you guys about my experience um, and my thoughts about the whole process. So my best friend who actually started this YouTube channel with me like five, six years ago now at this point, um, we signed up for the Disney World 10K. Um, neither of us are like super crazy runners or anything. Her brother and his girlfriend and their whole family were like signing up. So she asked me to do it with her and I was like, why not? First, I'll just talk to you guys about the Run Disney experience and then we can get into Disney World. For starters, the Disney World 10K was on a Friday, but on Thursday, we had to check in at like the Disney Expo. I don't know exactly what the times were, I forget, but I think it closed around like 6 p.m. So since I was coming from California, I came in on Wednesday. I left from like San Francisco at like eight in the morning and didn't get there until like four. If you are signing up for the marathon, or any of the races, that is something to think about that you'll have to like sign in the day before the race. I think it's the day before for all of them. I'm not exactly sure if what each different race is like, but I had to like account that into travel time and stuff. Another thing is that the race starts at 5 a.m. So because I was on Pacific Standard Time, that was like 2 a.m. my time, but also they want you to get there like really early. So it was like midnight my time. My body clock was very off and that was honestly good that I had gotten there Wednesday because I had a night already to, I guess, somewhat adjust. Also, we were not staying at a Disney hotel the whole time. We were staying at like a Holiday Inn that was maybe like 10 minutes from the park. It really wasn't bad and they had like a shuttle to the park and everything. But my friend had heard that the race morning is really difficult because part of the race is on a freeway. So they close a lot of the roads. So last minute we booked a Disney hotel for Thursday night just so we could spend the night there and wake up and take like the shuttle that Disney had at like three in the morning. So that was like an extra cost that we should have maybe like thought about before because we did technically then have a hotel for two nights that we paid for at the same time but it was 100% worth it because getting up that early was so hard. I mean, we were both so like nervous for the race, nervous we were gonna sleep through it that like we didn't even get that good of sleep anyways. But um, just being able to walk the five minutes to like get on the bus and then the bus take us directly there was definitely the move. That's definitely something to think about and to account for. At the bus stop at the hotel, they said like the last bus they want you to get on is 3.30 in the morning. So we had to be up at like three. Also, once you get there, we stood around for a long time and I don't know what those things are called. They're like metallic blanket things that everyone wears after like marathons and stuff. A lot of people had them. I don't know if they had to run the 5K the day before and had them like left over or if there was somebody handing them out that we just missed, but I was cold. Um, we did have like a shirt and our bib. You get the shirt in the bib, which is what you get at the expo. A lot of people actually didn't wear like the Disney 10K shirt. And we noticed like people would just wear that during the day at Disneyland, but we're just wearing like their workout gear, but we wore our 10K shirts. There was an opening ceremony, um, but honestly, like it was so early and I was so cold and like tired. I really didn't pay that much attention to it. There was, I think 10,000 people running the 10K. So it was a ton of people. So you all kind of like get into these areas and you go based on time. So so like we had estimated I think that we were our mile time would be between 10 and 12 minutes so we were in like this huge group but even that we probably didn't cross the finish line until like 5 30 which was like 30 minutes after the race officially started every few hundred people they like restart it all and they have the fireworks go off so you get like the full experience as you're about to start the race and everything so yeah it is a lot of waiting around and standing around which was like annoying when we had to wake up so early in the morning to then just like stand and wait um, I would have rather been in bed. That's just part of the experience, I guess. You run on the freeway. I mean, they have the freeway closed. You run through Hollywood Studios and you also run through Epcot and you end up at the Epcot parking lot is where the finish line is. Along the race, they have um, characters for you to like stand and take pictures with, but those lines are insane if you like care about your time at all or even just like didn't want to be so far behind. 
I definitely don't think it's worth waiting in line unless that's like the only reason that you came. I mean, there are definitely people who like run the race and are all decked out and dressed up and who were really wanting like the Disney experience. And I guess that's part of Run Disney. They also have water and bathrooms along the race. It was pretty cool running through Hollywood Studios and Epcot. We had already been to Hollywood Studios, but we hadn't been to Epcot yet. So um, that was kind of fun, but it was also dark. So I couldn't really see that much. You finish in the Epcot parking lot and they have food and drinks for you as you cross the finish line. They had like Gatorade, water, and like a whole snack pack, which had like granola bars, um, bananas, stuff like that. And then they gave you that like foil blanket thing. When I finished, I was waiting for my friend at the end. So I was like really happy that I had food and like drinks and that blanket thing because I definitely would have been freezing um, and really uncomfortable if I didn't have that. That's pretty much everything about the race. It was actually like super fun and it made me want to do more 10Ks or like push myself to do longer races. There was definitely that adrenaline and competitiveness that was kind of fun. I wanted to be a 10 minute mile. I averaged like a 945 mile, which I know is not super fast, but I was really happy with it. And so that definitely made me feel good and like put me in a good mood. So now to get into my Disney World experience, um, like I mentioned earlier, I'm from California. I've been to Disneyland a handful of times. I have been curious about what Disney World is like, but I've always felt like that Disneyland was probably better since it's like the OG and I just feel like it has more Disney magic, which I did find was true. Um, I did feel like I got more of the magical feeling going to Disneyland than I did to Disney World, but there's definitely like circumstances. I feel like the fact that one, I was pretty jet lagged and then the fact that we had like our 10K coming up or we had just run it and we were just exhausted. Disneyland is like so much walking that that made it really difficult. So our first day we went to Hollywood Studios, which when I was looking online, reading about which parks to go to, that was actually a park that people said that we should miss. But I'm actually really happy that we went. We were only able to get on two rides. We got like a later start on our day because I was jet lagged. And then we made the mistake of thinking, oh, we'll just get coffee at the park. There was like no maps and we were super lost and all the lines are super long that that probably took like an hour of our time. We also had to go to the expo that day. We wanted to go around like two or three. We had to check into the other hotel, like get our stuff from the hotel that we were staying at. So we had like other stuff to do. And also like, we didn't want to walk too much where we were going to be like sore or our feet were going to hurt because we did not want to make the race any more painful than it was already going to be. So we only got on two rides. We did Tower of Terror, which they have that at California Adventure, which is a super fun ride. I'm really glad that we did it. The line was probably almost an hour. And then we went on Rock and Roller Coaster, which is all about an Aerosmith roller coaster. That was really fun. And I'm glad that we did that. But again, that was probably like an hour in line. So definitely pretty long lines. I had really wanted to go see like the Star Wars galaxy that they have in Hollywood Studios, but we looked at like the wait time online. I downloaded an app and the ride that we would have wanted to go on was like way over an hour and like I said we had other stuff that we had to do so we didn't make it over there but they did have kind of a cute Main Street area type of thing that was very like old Hollywood. I really liked Hollywood Studios. Then on Friday after our 10k we went to Epcot which everybody online was saying that Epcot was the place for adults to go. I did not like it. I think the thing that attracts people to Epcot is that there's a lot of drinking and people drink around the world. I'm not a big drinker in general. And then the fact that we had just run our 10K, I did not really want to like be drinking alcohol. And also a big thing for me was just, I didn't like how they were, I felt like they were profiting off of a lot of people's cultures. Um, and they were just kind of like picking stereotypes of how to like represent cultures and I just didn't like it. There was some sense of like, oh, this is cool and this is pretty to like check out each country. But at the same time, I had another feeling of being like, I feel like you're ripping people off and like stealing people's culture, or like very much monetizing what they can from each country. And that just felt weird to me. I didn't like that. If I genuinely want to go experience like some other culture, I would love to go travel there someday. Like I don't want it, I don't want the whitewashed Disneyland version, but we also just went on two rides. Um, they don't have a whole ton of rides. There was like a frozen ride. That line was insane. So we did not wait in that line. We went on test track, which is literally just an ad for Chevrolet. It was a fun ride. Um, you like 
design your car and then you ride in it and literally you go on this roller coaster track that goes around a parking lot that has a bunch of parked Chevys and then you walk out. Disneyland always has their little like gift shop at the end of the rides. They have a Chevrolet dealership. I had never experienced something like that at like Disneyland. I don't really feel like they sell you things beyond Disney. So I thought that was kind of weird, but like it was a really fun ride. I had a good time on it. And then we also went on Soaring Over the World, which was really fun. That's really similar to Soaring Over California, which is in California Adventure. That ride's super cool. And it was Casey's first time going on that. She'd never been on the one in California Adventure and she was like amazed at how real it felt. So that one's always fun to do. And then because we had done the race, we were exhausted. We went back to the hotel, went in like the hot tub, had an early dinner and went to bed. And then Saturday was our biggest day. We went to the Magic Kingdom, which by far the best. That is so similar. It's basically like Disneyland. I think it's like a little bit bigger. Honestly, the only ride that stood out to me that wasn't included was the Matterhorn. I'm sure there are other rides that they don't have, but oh, like Indiana Jones also. But those two are like ones that I love at Disneyland that they didn't have. They had most of the good ones plus some more. So the first ride that we went on was Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain is so fun. Their version of it was a little bit different. I feel like I actually understood more of the story more um, or maybe I just never paid attention to the one in Disneyland. Then we went on Thunder Mountain Railroad which was pretty similar to the one in Disneyland. Then we did Space Mountain which is like one of my favorite rides at Disneyland if not my favorite. Oh then we did Pirates of the Caribbean. Again very similar. That's a great ride. We really wanted to go on the Seven Dwarves Mine Train. That is a ride that they do not have at Disneyland. We did not get to go on it. The line was like an hour and a half and we looked at to buying the Lightning Lane, which is something that Disney World has that Disneyland doesn't. I don't know if it's a new thing, but basically like you pay more money to skip the line. Just kind of like a fast pass, but like fast passes you don't have to pay for. That felt a little like scammy. Disneyland really is trying to make more money. We were willing to pay it because it was going to be like $10 and I felt like I really wanted to go on the ride. If we bought it right then, it wouldn't work until like 9 p.m. And this was the day after our race, so we were still very tired. That was pretty much like our day at the Magic Kingdom. Overall, we had a really, really good time. That was by far my favorite part. Honestly, I think we both kind of wished that maybe we had gone to the Animal Kingdom Park. I don't really know much about it, but I would have skipped Epcot if I could do it over again. What was also really nice about Magic Kingdom is I don't know if they, I don't know why, lines were shorter. We did not have to wait nearly as long as we did at other parks. That's how we're able to go on four rides there instead of two like we did at the other ones. Also, it being so similar to Disneyland, I think we were able to find our way around it a lot easier. At the other ones, like I needed a map because we had no idea like what they had. It was also really amazing because we were there. The race was like January 5th or something, but all their Christmas decorations were still up and I've never been to Disneyland with the decorations. I know they decorate for like Halloween and Christmas and I've never seen that. Um, so that was actually really cool to finally experience that. What was weird though is I don't know if it's a COVID thing, but I kind of don't think so since it's Florida. We did not see any characters. We saw a little parade but we did not like get to meet any characters. That was a part of it that made it feel less like the Disney magic. Not that I like, love going to meet characters, but it's definitely part of the experience of like seeing them walk around. Like, little kids get excited to like meet princesses and I don't know, the seven dwarves or whatever. So those are all my thoughts on Disney World. And then our last night we went to Disney Springs, which is kind of like downtown Disney except it's a lot bigger and it's almost more just like a mall. There's tons of stores that aren't really even like Disney stores. I feel like if you live in Florida you might just go to Disney Springs as like your hangout area. There were so many people there. We did not make any reservations. We tried to go to dinner to a few places and we could not get in anywhere so definitely if you want to go you need to make a reservation. I guess it was a Saturday night. I don't know, we weren't expecting that. Just my overall final thoughts. Disney World is so much bigger than Disneyland and California Adventure. Like not even just how big the parks are, but everything is so spaced out. If you go to Disneyland, you can just walk literally across and you are at California Adventure. You have to take buses or like a tram or like the, these like air tram things to get from each park. Other than I think Hollywood Studios and Epcot are next to each other, but the others are miles apart. It was also, I guess, probably a very busy weekend considering it was their marathon weekend. And also this was, they were celebrating like their 50th anniversary of Disney World. So 
it was definitely very busy and maybe that's why the lines were like super long they were a lot longer than i feel like they were at disneyland or i feel like when i go to disneyland i'm a little bit savvier like we get there super early we go on all the rides we get fast passes for the ones we know are gonna like take forever we go home normally in like the middle of the day take a nap and then go back later when like all the kids have left but that we just weren't able to do because of jet lag and the race and how tired we were we did not stay at any park past like four so we did not see any fireworks or any of that i don't even know if that went on but definitely doing Disney World around like running a race when neither of us are expert runners was very, very physically taxing for us. But overall, I'm super happy that, that I got to check it out and that we ran the race. I also had like the best time with Casey. We always have the best time together. Yeah, those were my thoughts on Run Disney and my first time at Disney World. I hope you guys liked it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video.